<laughs> well, Mike Murphy over at Quartz spotted a patent that sheds new light on the future of self-driving cars. Google's patent number 9,352,752 for engaging and disengaging for autonomous cars features appears to come in the form of a button, which might make taking over uh, for a self-driving car or the other way around as easy as going in and out of cruise control. Mm. Now, Mike points out that uh, for this patent, the car will check its surroundings before going into autonomous mode. Uh, mind you, this is just a patent, and Google did not respond to Quartz's request for information about whether this feature will be used anytime soon, for example, in their new self-driving minivans. <laughs> I thought you were kidding about the uh, 9,352,000 blah, blah, blah patents. But when I actually looked at the patent, that was the number. That's no. insanity. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not make that up. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, patents can tell us a lot or just lead us down a path. Uh, that, that will maybe see some way. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, down the line. <laughs> but I guess the point is that this is a key feature. How uh, in the transition are we going to go back and forth between taking over for the self-driving car or having the self-driving car? car take over for us and you know one of the things this patent says along the signs of the you know digital assistant the car could take decide by itself you that don't. it's not safe to switch over to manual mode i love that now we we actually don't think that you are capable of taking control right now but that actually makes perfect sense right if it's a complicated scenario someone a car right in front of, of the car you're in is changing lanes that might not be the best point for your you know tapping on the accelerator to actually you know kick into place so it makes perfect sense that it would be smart enough to make that determination along the way i can't wait for the self-driving car button i just I cannot know. Wait, I, you know, I, I've made this comment before, but uh, it just strikes me so much that when I, I took a test drive in one of the BMW self-driving cars at CES a few years ago, and when I came off the plane in Las Vegas and got in my own minivan to drive home, I was disappointed that I had to do it myself. I mean, it was that fast, the way that you just get acclimated to the idea and you're ready for it. I mean, the brain can, it, you, how much, does cruise control freak you out? No. You're still kind of there. You got your foot so you can jump on the brake anytime. But it was amazing to me how fast my brain switched over and was comfortable with it. Cruise control freaked me out the first time I used it. I, I remember I remember using cruise control for the first time and like hitting it and taking my foot off and just feeling like that loss of control, right? Like, sure, I could still steer, but no matter what, my car is going this fast in this forward direction until until I interfere. That's a little freaky at first. Yeah. I, I can't wait till self-driving cars uh, either. A little personal story about the weekend. I got pulled over in the middle of the day driving on like a country road out here. I was in the middle of the day. I hadn't been drinking. I wasn't tired. Uh, but I got pulled over and I saw the lights. I was like, oh, what am I doing? And I wasn't speeding either. And he was just like, um, I saw you kind of going back and forth across the lane. You're a little bit in the shoulder. And I was just like, I'm a horrible driver. <laughs> if you listen to my podcast, you would know that because I say that all the time. I was literally just, I was listening to podcasts. I was sort of just, he's like, yeah, you should stay out of the shoulder. I mean, there was no one in the shoulder, but I was like, ah. or I just get a self-driving car. He was like, he didn't give me a ticket or anything. He was just like, I just thought, yeah, he thought I was falling asleep. But I was like, no, I just. Maybe, maybe he was falling just asleep. Just bad at this. He needed something to do. Yeah. Not biking in Petaluma anytime soon. Yeah, <laughs> not when you've got Maroni on the road. <laughs> uh, do you guys have in your cars the um, assistive assistive driving features, like the one, uh, my car, where you're coming up on a car that's stopped, it'll go beep, 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 beep. No. And, you know, if you're looking down or changing the radio station, it kind of forces you to put your head up. Um, that has been incredibly um, useful at times, and it's made me even more excited about self-driving car. And with you, Megan, it would be the lane assist, you know, that yes. keeps you in the lane. But what I'm wondering about is I get a lot of false positives uh, where it's like I'm on a curve, but there's a parked car that's sort of in, in my direct trajectory, and it'll give me the beep, 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 beep. Well, the other thing that they're starting to layer into new cars is automatic braking. So even when it really senses that you're about to have an accident, it's going to automatically lay the brakes on. And I just am so curious how the false positives with the sensor technology are going to weigh in when the car is actually taking over in these instances. It might be more complicated than when you know the car is in self-driving mode anyways. You know, to your point, Jason, about being vigilant when you're in the first few times you're you're in cruise control, you know you've pushed the button and mm -hmm. that you've given the control over to the car. Whereas with some of these layered in um, invisible assistive technologies, that might be more disconcerting. 
for sure.